We're proud of our town, and I'd like to show you why. DeKalb has come a long way since the early pioneers who built our town may have thought it was a good idea to have two major highways and a railroad all crossing at the same intersection. It didn't quite turn out that way, for today we've got trains moving through heavy traffic in the very center of our town. In fact, back in the 1850s, they thought it was a good idea to build their stores and shops along the Chicago Road at a point where it took a sudden turn from the east-west direction. Because of this, the secondary roads were built in all directions from the downtown business area. A bit of the old is still with us. Their beautiful tree-shaded homes overlook wide lawns and narrow streets, paved with a material that gave excellent footing for their horses, but not so for our modern vehicles. These early citizens were enterprising men who could not, even in their wildest imagination, see the vast town expansion of today. For many years, the community remained small and slow in growth. Life was easy and pleasant with few community problems that could not easily be solved. Those good old days are gone now. During the past few years, Northern Illinois has experienced a great population and industrial expansion due, no doubt, to the importance of the Middle West as a great and growing trade center. DeKalb has participated in this enormous expansion and city planners have encouraged and welcomed new people and industries to locate here. Factory employment has doubled to well over 8,000 people and yet the demand for skilled workers is far from satisfied. The most startling growth of all has occurred in education. In 1895, a small state teacher's college was organized to train much needed country school teachers. That small school now has grown into a great university where over 18,000 students can obtain degrees in many fields. To provide classrooms and dormitories for this great student body, the university has had to spend over $60 million. Now it has another 53 million in new building projects planned for in the next two years. This great growth has had a tremendous impact upon our community. Great sums of money were needed to provide services, both public and private, for the great numbers of new people who have brought their families to DeKalb. An example of the need for rapid expansion is in our new sanitary district, which is again being enlarged to meet the demands of a growing community. The recently completed senior high school is the fifth addition to our school system in recent years and large amounts of money have been spent in the modernization of all other school properties. Every community service has been expanded to meet the needs of the great numbers of new citizens. Private capital has flowed into the community in an almost inexhaustible supply with the construction of homes, apartments, shopping centers, business buildings and stores, many seeking growth in the expected expansion of industry and the university. Building permits within the city and excluding university construction have averaged over a half million each month for the past five years. Investors are many, and development is regulated for the best interests of our community. The majority of our people have been very much aware of community needs and have approved by vote many public projects that have been desperately needed. DeKalb retail merchants have been exceptionally active in promoting their services. By combining their efforts, they've built public confidence and goodwill by the promotion of many community activities and have devoted much time and effort in their own special projects, like this free corn boil held each year. Their retail sales have increased steadily to a total of $60 million annually. Our downtown merchant has enjoyed a steady growth, which has given him the opportunity of keeping his store up to date, and thus he's able to meet his competition.
Vast sums of money have been spent by our business people in modernization because most of these buildings are nearly 100 years old and extremely difficult to maintain. In our modern competitive society, it's quite possible that we'll see an ever-increasing movement of merchants to new locations seeking better returns on their investment. This youngster, enjoying a picnic steak in our city park, isn't worried a bit about the future. And yet within a few short years, the chances are that she'll be very much involved in community problems. How serious these problems depends a great deal upon us today. Many of us who have seen the growth of the community from a small country town to a bustling big city are concerned about the future and what it has to offer. DeKalb has strived to meet the demand of the community expansion that already exists. However, many problems still plague us, and these must be solved before we can rest content with a well-ordered and adjusted community. Time is an important factor in making this proper adjustment. All predictions tell us to expect an even greater growth within the next 10 years. What kind of a community can we provide when the university student body is doubled to 32,000 students? Will the community then become just another college town with education way out of proportion to all other sources of revenue? No community problem is more pressing today than the automobile. Traffic control, parking and accidents present a major social problem. Well, we've got to find a solution to this dilemma, unless we're willing to accept complete chaos for 1975, when there will be three times as many automobiles using our streets. A growing community always attracts young families and consequently will be faced with the need for more and more school facilities. If predictions are correct, then our schools will have nearly three times as many children to teach in another 10 years. These are our children, young and healthy, energetic, vigorous, full of life, and we anticipate a bright future for them. It's difficult to imagine what our town will be like in the next few years, but if three or four thousand new homes are constructed, they'll require much of our surrounding farmland. Our great task of planning, rebuilding, and guiding the growth of our community, making certain that it remains a good town in which to live, is a tremendous responsibility, far beyond the competence of any one man or agency. We need to apply all the talents and energies that can be assembled, not only from the business community, but from the university, the labor unions, the service organizations, in fact, from every one of us. The final decision on the planning for the needs and operation of our community rests upon the men of our city council. Mayor, city manager, council members. Men selected by the community to guide the destiny of our town. It's their obligation to put into effect the solutions to the many problems that are constantly arising. However, they make few decisions without the full information and advice, either directly or indirectly, from the citizens of the community. They obtain this information from the many boards and commissions who direct the various city services, from the men who are in charge of the various city departments, from professional consultants, and finally from the citizens themselves through very helpful citizens' committees. One of the important groups of citizens devoting much time towards the needs of our community is the City Planning Commission, made up of private citizens from many different occupations and representatives from public agencies, such as the sanitary district, school and park boards, township, and the university. It has the primary function of studying and planning for the future. 
With the assistance of a consulting firm, this committee drew up the 1954 Comprehensive Master Plan and its 1963 revision. Recently, the Commission completed a new master plan which will conform to the new estimates of growth for the year 1980. Every action of the City Council is made either in direct accord with the Planning Commission or with their recommendations as a background. Traffic and street improvement has been a major concern of both the City Council and the Planning Commission. Of the total city streets, only 16% or about 8 miles remain unimproved. A very large part of these unimproved streets were located in the Meadowlands Edition in the northeast section of our town. This area, containing nearly 3 miles of roadway, has now been improved. Well-paved streets with curbs, sidewalk, and city services always improve the property values as well as the general appearance of the area. To visualize the vast improvement in appearance, here are before and after scenes taken of the same block in the Meadowland edition. North First Street has been a source of concern for many parents. Serving a large residential area, it's heavily traveled and in addition has two schools located nearby. Many youngsters must use the edge of this roadway in their travels to and from classes. The City Council is anxious to eliminate this great hazard as quickly as possible by widening, resurfacing and putting in sidewalks for the youngsters. Three other unimproved roads, all carrying heavy university traffic, are soon to be improved. These are Garden Road, Normal Road, and Russell Road. The final major area of unimprovement is in the golf edition on the southeast side of our town. This area will bring to an end, with a few exceptions, all remaining unimproved streets in the city. No future additions to the city can be incorporated unless the subdivider provides streets and services conforming to city standards. Traffic congestion in our community is often serious, and it's certain to worsen in the future unless we build alternate routes around congested areas. The driver should be given a choice of streets through or to various points in our town. An example is in the recently completed 7th Street extension. Traffic from a large residential area was forced to travel several blocks in the wrong direction and then negotiate a bad U-turn in traveling to the shopping areas on Sycamore Road. Our map shows in red the route that had to be traveled to get from the upper left side of the map to the upper right side. And now the cutoff, shown in green, has eliminated many blocks of unnecessary travel. This cutoff, which required the construction of a bridge across the Kishwaukee River, has speeded the flow of traffic and has almost eliminated a very congested U-turn. university grows as rapidly as Northern has, it's certain to find in its student body an ever-increasing amount of new talent that can be developed not only in its music department, but also in athletics. Northern Illinois University has become increasingly more powerful in its football, and the need for stronger competition has been quite evident. Many fine, well-known teams have visited DeKalb to play our Huskies, and it's quite possible that someday the teams comparable to the Big Ten may be competing in Northern Stadium. Great crowds of football fans will be attracted to DeKalb, and under present highway conditions, 
they'll have more difficulty in reaching their goal of the stadium than the Huskies will in making touchdowns. Most of all of the traffic to and from the stadium is bottled up in the dead end of Annie Glidden Road and is forced to move through the congested business district of DeKalb. The city and township are cooperating to extend Annie Glidden Road south with an underpass at the railroad and then across this field to Taylor Street, which gives access to all south and eastern sections of the town. Traffic will then have an alternate and can avoid the main business district with its heavy traffic. Since it's estimated that we will have three times the traffic ten years from now, and since we'll have many events here in DeKalb that will draw traffic from all over northern Illinois, it's unthinkable that we can continue to allow our through routes of 23 and 30 to introduce heavy traffic into our business area. The Planning Commission, in cooperation with the state of Illinois, is attempting to find a solution. This map is a part of the comprehensive master plan. The black lines show the location of the present routes and the red indicate the possible bypass. It's estimated that today, 15 to 20,000 automobiles use our streets and parking facilities. Three times this present number would congest our town to a point of complete immobility. Our city planners are aware that this is our most pressing problem and know that much effort must be devoted towards reaching a solution. We can expect to see great improvement in parking, streets and highways in the next few years. DeKalb housewives have never had to worry about the purity of the water they use in the preparation of the family meal. They can expect and receive fresh, pure water that had its origin in the lakes and streams of the North Woods, traveling hundreds of miles underground to their kitchen with almost no chance of contamination. The city has eight wells capable of pumping at top speed seven million gallons of water daily, which is more than our maximum needs. Around-the-clock maintenance assures us of a constant supply of fresh water. As a protection against disaster, the city maintains a ground-level reservoir containing 500,000 gallons and an elevated tank holding 750,000 gallons. This elevated tank also serves to provide a pressure of 50 pounds on the water lines. And thus, we have good water flow even at the far end of the main. With the expected increase in population, our present wells will soon be incapable of meeting demands. The Council, on advice of an engineering study, have recently completed a new well on West Lincoln Highway. Two others are authorized and will soon be drilled. They'll connect to a new 14-inch main that will completely circle our community. This map shows the three new wells in red and the new water main in blue. Three additional wells, shown in dark blue, will be drilled in the future as requirements increase. A million-gallon storage tank of latest design is being built on West Lincoln Highway to help hold pressures even in the high-rise buildings on the university campus. This is a small-scale model of that new tank. The water department must be able to pump twice the maximum city consumption for an eight-hour period so that the fire department can have plenty of water at any time in the event of a major catastrophe. Also, the fire department personnel must be thoroughly familiar with their equipment, and thus many practice runs are made as is this one. With plenty of water available, good equipment, and well-trained firemen, the citizens reap an unexpected reward in lower fire insurance rates for all city property. DeKalb can be proud of its fire department, which has been able to maintain an extremely low fire loss rate of about $2 per capita each year, very much below the national average. Three private citizens willing to give up much of their personal time to help out with civic problems make up the police and fire commission. 
charged with the responsibility of conducting examinations and authorizing promotions in both departments, they contribute much towards making a fine relationship among the men of each department. The equipment of both the police and fire departments is constantly being brought up to date so that the best possible protection is always maintained. Just recently, the city council purchased this new 1,250-gallon pumper, which is the pride of the fire department, as you can see. The problems of our town are quite similar to those of Kalamazoo, Michigan. Being a university town, it too has experienced a rapid growth in population. Several years ago, they discovered that their downtown business district was losing much of its trade and deteriorating rapidly. What they did to correct this situation is most startling. The city administration closed three blocks in the area to all traffic, and then proceeded to tear up the pavement and install a most beautiful mall. The result of this has been quite rewarding. During the first year, retail sales in the mall jumped 40%, well above the state average. In addition, new merchants flocked to the area for store locations and property values zoomed. The old store buildings were either modernized or torn down and replaced. Today, this area is the most desirable in the city. The benefit to the citizens and their interest in the area was the greatest reward. The mall is a very pleasant place to do a bit of shopping or to spend a little time enjoying its beauty. A sidewalk cafe is a nice place to enjoy luncheon. The mother can leave her children in the playground with complete assurance that the... Although the mall appears most useful in summertime, the merchants can do wonders with it in the wintertime with ice skating, carnivals, and contests. The mall has been so well accepted that nearly all are in favor of extending it to all downtown streets, but this would cause a traffic problem. Engineers are now building a four-lane route closely surrounding the business area, plan to provide parking space immediately inside this encircling highway, and thus access to the mall will be maintained. This map shows these parking spaces in gray and the future area of the enlarged mall in colors. The mall is so famous that three DeKalb citizens made a visit to study its possible application to DeKalb. John Lloyd, city councilman, Jerry Piller, chamber secretary, and Jolly Erickson, chairman of the Urban Renewal Committee, were certainly impressed with what they found. Kalamazoo has sought to take care of its elderly. This fine project is being considered in DeKalb's future plans. These three men from DeKalb were very much impressed with Kalamazoo's new municipal building. The fine addition to their community was quite in contrast to DeKalb's old city hall. Built nearly 100 years ago, it's so old and worn out that it long ago came to the end of its usefulness. Many city offices must now secure other quarters, for the building is unsafe. DeKalb voters, understanding the great need for a new city building, voted a bond issue of nearly $1 million for the construction of a new municipal building of their own, which will be a fine addition to our community. There's little doubt that had it not been for this citizens committee, DeKalb would have had little chance of obtaining the bond issue for the new municipal building. The majority of the voters were well aware of its need, but many had grave doubts about the various locations proposed. This citizens committee devoted much of their time and energies to present the facts to the community so that on the day of the vote, most doubts were dispelled. DeKalb is fortunate in having so many people who are interested in the welfare of their community and are willing to sacrifice to make it a better place in which to live. Our city hospital, built many years ago, was enlarged quite recently at very little cost to the taxpayers. Total capacity is now 115 patients, and on an average day, 80% of the beds will be occupied. Although tax supported, only 2% of the total operating cost of the hospital comes from such money. Staffed with 34 doctors, 
It provides fully accredited hospital care for all of DeKalb citizens. The hospital board is quite anxious to improve the services even further with an intensive care area for heart patients. Also an extended care area for those requiring lengthy recovery and a new pediatric section. However, the most pressing problem facing the board is the awareness that soon capacity will be exceeded. Plans are now being developed to build another addition that will provide space for 158 additional patients, certainly to be needed by 1980. The public library, built in 1930, received worldwide acclaim for its unusual combination of Grecian, Gothic, and modern architecture. The designer, Bertram Weber, gained considerable fame from its design. The foresight of this man provided a building which has served our community adequately for these many years. The library board has always been proud of the fact that DeKalb citizens have always required of their library a higher level of literature than most. This is due, no doubt, to the catalyst of the university, which evidently has stimulated the general public into the enjoyment of reading better than average books. The board just recently developed a new children's section where youngsters find complete freedom of choice. They enjoy this room so much because, well, here they can read not what they're told by their parents or teacher, but what strikes their fancy. And this is fun for them, and the board tries its best to supply the books and encourage this freedom of choice. It's a startling experience to anyone who studies the operation of our city government to discover the great number of private citizens acting in advisory capacities on the many boards and commissions. Giving up much valuable personal time, many of them must and do handle very challenging tasks. The Zoning Board of Appeals often has to decide against one man's desires in order to make certain that the overall long-range pattern of community growth is not altered. People not only serve their community through these advisory boards and commissions, but many citizens' committees, service clubs, public and private organizations, all are vitally interested in community welfare. The Junior Chamber of Commerce concluded recently that DeKalb needed welcoming signs along the four entrances to our town. And they're now a much appreciated part of our community. Our town isn't just made up of bricks and mortar, but it's a living, breathing, progressive community made up of people, and people are our most important asset. Civic-minded folks who are proud of their community and want it to be a better place in which to live. As long as we continue to be interested in community improvement, then there should be little fear for the future of DeKalb. Our children, too, seem to be infected with the spirit of pride in their community and nation. And upon this, we base all our hopes for a fine future for them, too, in the years ahead. Remember, we're the citizens of today and the pioneers of tomorrow. And maybe our only doubt should be, do we have the vision in our present planning? Or will these children someday look back upon us as we do the pioneers of long ago and say, they thought it was a good idea, but it didn't quite turn out that way. This is our town today, and we're mighty proud of it. What about tomorrow?